sober, busy living sober, busy living sober. How is everybody today? It's so good to see you. It is episode 462. 462. So many things to talk about. So many things have occurred ah, since I was here last Wednesday. Can you imagine in one week how much has gone on? It's kind of crazy. Um, I am, oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm full of joy. I'm full of hope. I'm full of just feeling, I'm, I feel really happy. I really, for the first time in a long time, I feel like our country might be coming back to something good. I am, um, I have to do tell you, although I have a herniated disc and a slip disc in my back right now. So I'm in a little bit of pain. Um, it's been like just taking Advil because let's face it. I don't like to take any of that medication. It makes me feel terrible. I understand if you need to take it, I get it. But for me, I just don't like it. It makes everything not r run smoothly. If you know what I mean? So I just, um, I'm just a little in pain. I just wanted to let you guys know that. So um, I also want to say, if you're here, welcome back. It's so I'm so glad you're here. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. And I hope you enjoy the show. And I hope you subscribe to my channel. And if you like what I have to say, please go to my Patreon, which is www.patreon forward slash busy living sober. And um, please subscribe to my show. And please um, subscribe to my um, Patreon. It'd be awesome. And if you like to go to the like sign and please say, yes, I'm going to subscribe to your show on YouTube. It would be amazing. And if you want to get my newsletter in your inbox, you can go to um, busylivingsober.com or elizabethchance.com. I'll take you to the same place. And there you will get a prompt to sign up for my newsletter. So please do that as well. Um, wow. Last night was huge, huh? Um, no matter who you are, you know, J.D. Vance getting signed on to be the vice president. Um, he is the potential vice president if he, Donald Trump and him win in November. And wow. I remember when I watched his, I haven't read the book, the book he wrote, um, Hillbilly Elegy, but I watched the movie with, um, you know, it was with, oh my gosh, I'm having a total, you know what, um, Glenn Close. Besides some other people, it was amazing. It was an amazing movie, and I remember seeing it. And I'm going to read the book now because everybody says how great it is. But um, it's so amazing to see a guy who came from really tough upbringing, which those of us with um, that come from alcoholic homes, and it doesn't matter what spectrum I think you are, it's the chaos and everything else we can all relate to, that he grew up in, in um, the Appalachian Mountains. And where he's come to today and Donald Trump calling him 20 minutes before he announced that he was going to be his VP was of course a Donald Trump thing. But to think that a man that's been through so much is, uh, wow, amazing. And his mom, he mentioned in an interview yesterday that his mom's been is celebrating 10 years of continuous sobriety. And, you know, I'm always like, so amazing. It's so amazing. Congratulations to JD Vance's mom on 10 years of sobriety. That's just amazing. Um, so he was 29 when his mom finally got sober. And, you know, I don't say finally, but she finally got it. And I think we all, it takes whatever it takes to get there, but she got there. And I think that's all that matters. And I think that like keeping trying and keeping trying is what the important thing is. Um, I have just been <clears throat> in awe recently of what's gone on. I, um, if those of you that follow me on Instagram on busy living sober, um, podcast, I think is what it's under busy living sober. As we all know, I'm not that I, I do it, but because it's a means to an end, but I, I don't enjoy it. But anyway, when I went on there on, um, Saturday evening, um, cause I happened to be watching the presidential debate. Uh, I mean, the presidential rally, but, um, Donald Trump's rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. I have a friend who constantly sends me text messages when he's coming on. She's like, oh, you got to go turn it on. He's coming on right now. Go. There's a rally right now. And um, JF and I were home that night. So we, I, he was making dinner or putting the steaks on whatever we were doing. And um, I was watching and all of a sudden I had this just eerie feeling come over me that he was going to be shot. I don't know why. And um he was, and by the grace of God, he moved his head enough that the actual bullet like just literally took off the top of his ear. And if he had been, if he hadn't moved, I think we would, we all know now that 
we would be having a different outcome today. And uh, wow, it's so amazing <clears throat> to me, you know, to know that God, God is so good. And um, I might take it one step further and I might have some of you go, oh my gosh, this girl's crazy. I'm not following her anymore, whatever you want to do. And I did have people that stopped following me after that video for whatever reason. They obviously don't like my politics and that's fine. And that's okay. I might not, not everybody, I'm not everybody's top, cup of tea, which is fine. But um, I found out like when they said that it was literally, there's photographs of the bullet going past him and I'm just scraping his ear. And it was like literally just a wind had come, a little small wind. And I don't know if a lot of people know this, but like there was, a, you know, the Blessed Mother caused wind to come in Portugal and they didn't have a war because of that, because there were big storms and ships couldn't come in because of this wind. And to think that, you know, just one little thing, one little thing, one little burst of wind and the bullet went this way. I guess from what I heard from somebody else, if it had been a higher caliber gun or a more powerful bullet, the wind wouldn't have been able to make it sway like that. But it, well, it because of the bullet that it was, it did. It, it just, it, 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 he moved his head, the wind, everything. He, he was, he was saved. And uh, to think that, I know one other person that was a priest at my father, um, Frank Allen from S St. David's church in St. David's Episcopal church in outside of Philadelphia. Um, he was in a, in a plane crash and the pilot and the, and another person were killed and he wasn't killed. Neither was his wife or his three boys. And, uh, so I know two people that have escaped death and it, it totally changes you. And you could see that, at least I felt like, and I talked to another friend who, who agreed with me, that when you saw Donald Trump last night, he definitely looked like a changed man. He looked very emotional and he's stoic. You know, the Teamster president called him an, a, a strong SOB, which he is, but uh, you could see that there was a tenderness about him. I'm also noticing that the text messages that I'm getting receiving, uh, which seem like they come all day, but anyway, um, are, they are filled with more love. And he says, I love you all Americans. And I'm like, wow, that's, you know, wow. He's telling us he loves us. And what an amazing um, transformation. And I think once we let God into our lives and we recognize that God is everywhere and God is everything or he is nothing. And for me is everything, you know, we can make sense of things, right? We can be like, I can manage this because I know I have God in my life, which is such a gift. I know I, um, I have, as you guys know, I listen to Halo app in the morning and right now they're doing a um, segment about Pope Paul, Pope John Paul. Um, and it's been, I'm only on day two and I also listened to that. And then I listened to uh, Father Mike Smits, and then I listened to a women's devotional. And, you know, today, you know, we all have stuff going on, right? We all have stuff going on. And when I was listening to it today, this it was like the same message I heard through through all three of these um things I listened to and then did the rosary. But what I what I what I gathered or I heard today was like, you know, we all go through things. And it's how we handle the things that go on in our lives. It's not the actual event, right? There's so many things that can take us to a place of darkness and a place of sadness and a place of um, feeling just like we want to just pull all the covers over our head and we just want to close the door and we don't want to see anybody anymore and we just want it all to be over. And um, and I don't mean that in a suicidal way. I just mean in a way that's just like, it just gets sometimes really heavy and we don't know what to do. And a lot of times people pick up a drink or a drug. And, um, but knowing that there's another option and that, you know, the good times are not only part of life, but the bad times. And times of change and times of struggle and times of wondering how and why did this happen and all these other things that we that uh, go on in our heads. And we wonder, why is this going on? Why is this happening to me, 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 me? And when is this going to be over? And it's learning to just sometimes we have to sit in the feelings 
Um, I know that doctors are like, here, I'm going to give you a pill so you don't have to feel so sad. And, but I think it's through the tough times, at least for me personally, it's through the tough times that I gather strength to get another day, right? And it is through the tough times that I can hear and I get quiet enough that I say, God, can you help me? Can you just help me today? And uh, just give me a sign that I know that I'm okay. And and whatever that sign is for me personally, you probably have a sign for you that's personal, but ha- knowing that you are not alone and knowing that this too shall pass, everything is changing, right? Everything is changing. Who would have ever thought that Donald Trump was going to go into a rally? I mean, I've been to a rally, for those of you that don't know. Um, My daughter-in-law invited me to a rally and showed my husband and I an amazing tape and I had an amazing time and Kent at that point. And it was was in Georgia and we had front row seats and everything else. And I did say to, I did say to JF, and I think I even said to Ken, I'm like, gosh, this is so wide open. I mean, anybody could come in here and do anything. And he didn't, ca- I mean, Donald Trump didn't care. He's like, this is what I'm doing. I'm getting amongst the people. So the shock of having him shot at, at one of his rallies was not so shocking to me. But um, to see where we are now today, and I feel like something has shifted in this world. And I feel like, could we maybe be past the darkness? I hope. I mean, I know there's people out there that are saying, oh, it's going to be doomsday. It's going to get worse. 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 And um, I pray it doesn't. Um, Again, (laughs) I like to be like, look, I I so want to be positive. I want to be like, okay, Tinkerbell, it's all going to be good. Everything's going to work out. Everything's going to be happy. It's all going to be good. You know, I feel really badly for um, Joe Biden in so many ways, President Joe Biden. Um, I feel like that poor gentleman is is definitely going through something. And the fact that nobody's going, oh, my gosh, you're, by the way, you've got something going on. We maybe want to take care of you. And everybody is going against him. And it just must be, I can't even imagine, because he's human, too. Like, we're all human beings. Donald Trump's a human being. You're a human being. I'm a human being. We all have opinions. We all have feelings. We all have ways of looking at things. And uh, respect is this thing that's kind of fleeting. And I I know I segue a lot here, you guys, and I go and I bounce around to my ADD, but please excuse me. But I've realized um, something really big this week. I I had an, an encounter this week, and it was very interesting to me because this person was trying to be control of their life, majorly control of their life and every feeling and everything else. And uh, I was talking to this person on the phone and they were telling me, I got control. I I don't feel any feelings. I I got this. I I don't have to, I don't have to have a feeling. I don't have to have, I don't have to go there. And I thought to myself, wow. Wow. Like, can you imagine going through life saying, I'm got, I'm in control of every feeling I have. I, I, I don't go down any path. If I feel sad, I'm going to sit in a chair until that sadness goes. I'll sit in that chair until that sadness goes. And then I'm going to stand up and I'm going to be a robot again. <laughs> like, wow. And uh, people seek her for advice. I'm like, it's crazy. Um, but so many people out there are seeking advice. And I think that if you just like get quiet a lot of times and you get with God, it's like, that's the answer. It's not like a magic pill. It's not like going and paying a million dollars to go to a certain place that's going to fix you. I think you can pretty much fix yourself in a lot of ways. I mean, obviously, if you're drinking on a daily basis, you need to talk to a doctor. If you're doing drugs on a daily basis, you need to talk to a doctor. That's reality. That can kill you going off this stuff. This is not a joke. But I think that a lot of us have... um if we get quiet, I mean, really quiet, and uh, and we go to a place of like true honesty and true authenticity in our hearts, and we really get truthful with ourselves, a lot of things become not so scary, right? But if we compare ourselves to everybody else, it feels yucky, right? So we will look at people and they're like, they're richer than me, they're poorer than me, they're da 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 than me, they're prettier than me, they're the fatter than me, they're skinnier than me, they're da 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 And none of that brings us peace, right? It brings up those feelings again of comparison and going, oh my gosh, they're better, I'm worse. And 
I really think that it's getting okay in our hearts with who we are and knowing where we are and knowing as bad as it is, it will be better again. And if it's really good, it might not last forever either. It's being okay with that. It's be, being humble in the day and doing this life one day at a time, one day at a time. And some days it's one second at a time. But knowing that we only have to do today, today, tomorrow's not here yet. And a lot of us stare at this past that we have. At least I did for a long time. And I was filled with shame and I was filled with remorse and I was filled with regret for many, 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 many years, too many years to, to talk about, to actually. And, um, and so many people said to me, why are you staring at yesterday? Yesterday's already gone. And I'd be like, but, eh, but you don't understand what I did. And they'd be like, well, let it go. And I'd be like, I can't. And they're like, well, just let it go. And if you talk to somebody about it, whatever this is in your past, and you work on it and you realize like it is gone. Like you really take the time to go, you know what? Yesterday's gone. There's nothing I can do. I can't go backwards. I don't have a time machine. But the one thing I can do is learn from it. If I don't like my behavior, I have to change it. Nobody else is going to. It's up to me to change my behavior. It's not up to somebody else. It's up to me to focus on the fact that yesterday's gone. That door has closed. I'm moving forward. I can look at yesterday for a sense of history, right? A sense of what did I feel like when I did something that I didn't like? I got to make sure I don't want to, I don't want to do that again. So I don't have to have that feeling, even though that feeling might inevitably come back again, but you can at least identify it and go, you know what, if I do this, this is going to probably happen. So I don't want to do that again. I'm going to do something different. It's taking the time to do that, right? It's taking the time to identify what it is that causes you the feeling. If when you drink, you do things you don't like about yourself, maybe you should stop drinking. And you're like, but it's hard to stop drinking. Well, you can do it one day at a time. You can do it one day at a time, one second at a time, one minute at a time. I mean, I do really recommend going to AA because for me, it was like the, it's, it's, it's given me a life again. And it gave me these steps that I could follow and gave me a, a total blueprint of what to do if I wanted to drink and what to do when I had the feelings of shame and it identified where, uh, what, like what steps I needed to take to get freedom and what steps to take to get a relationship with God and what steps to take to find that higher power and what steps to take to ask somebody for help, which for so many of us, we think is a sign of weakness, which I believe is totally a sign of strength. It's the exact opposite. And um, you getting to that place, it's really, um, it's really interesting. You know, you think about life and uh, asking for help and and finding God, I will also find it really interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna segue back to JD Vance for a second here because he's now he's um converted to Catholicism, which I thought was so interesting. And um that takes a lot of work, by the way, you guys. And it's that's his religion, and he truly believes in God. And I find that so many people that have God in their lives are more content, right? And is that a threat to me? No. It shows me that something there works, right? Like having a relationship with God, turning your will and life over to God gives you an ability to be let go and to trust something that's bigger than you, right? Because human beings are going to let you down. I don't care who they are, right? Every human being lets us down. So many people let us down. And I'm sure so many people are let down by the Democratic Party. We all feel like we've been lied to since for the past three years after watching the debate. And uh, we all feel like what's going on. And instead of like going to the anger part, which we all could very well be very angry and we could all be on the streets going, oh my gosh, what's going on? But instead we're, we're sitting back and we're going, okay, what's going on? Somebody please tell us the truth. I love 
by the way, that Tucker Carlson was at the uh, was at the convention last night. As I don't know if how many of you guys know this, but I really, really love his message. He's been sober for 22 years. His family's the most important thing to him. This country's the most important thing to him. And uh, to hear a grown man talk about that stuff is just wow. God, sexy. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not sexy, but definitely I find um I find someone that finds our country that to be the most important thing and his wife and his kids that just makes me want to cry. Um because at the end of the day I think that's what the most important thing is for all of us is our families and um having the freedoms we have that sometimes we take for granted. Um when they sing the Star Spangled Banner, I mean, like I still get teary, and I remember being little and going to like hockey games, Blues games, and Cardinals games, and they'd sing the Star Spangled Banner, and I'd always cry because I've known people that have died in a war and died for our country, and it, uh, it's always I've always felt so lucky to have been born here and to be able to do whatever I wanted to, right? Like I can start this podcast and I can have people listen to it and I can have people not listen to it. I can have what, um, but I can go out there and I can try something and nobody's going to say, you can't believe in this or you can't believe in that. And you're not allowed to be this religion or that religion. You have to be what I am. And I think that's something we take for granted. And especially a lot of us, like I was born in 68, so I've never been through a war or anything, but you know, having, a uh, the ability to say, wow, thank you. We have these things. And um, it's been really good for a really long time. And to see that recently it's been really bad and to watch like our president almost be killed by a lone shooter was like really scary to me and um, really emotional to me. And then last night to watch J.D. Vance, a guy who's been through, had a really tough upbringing. It wasn't easy. He talked about last night how his grandmother would barter with Meals on Wheels and say, please, will you give me a little bit more food today because I have to feed my son. And I think we're living in times right now where a lot more people than we think are having a hard time feeding their families. And as a mom, it's like the scariest thing, right? Not to be able to feed your kids, take care of your kids. It's like, it's like, I, it's so scary. And and then the fentanyl and the people that are getting addicted and people that are dying and parents that are dying and, you know, elderly people that can't get their drugs. And now they're going out in the streets and picking up stuff. I mean, it's just like it's really dark stuff, you guys. And um, I have to have hope because to see somebody who's 39 years old, who's come from that to, uh, be named our nominee for the vice president of the United States of America is pretty damn awesome. Pretty awesome. Because it could be anybody, you guys. You know, we can do whatever we want right now living in America the way, you know, if we fight for our freedom still, we kind of get out there and fight for our freedoms. We don't want kids being taught like sex stuff because I didn't even know about sex, to be honest, when I was in elementary school and neither did you. Uh, so to be taught that stuff in school is probably not a great idea, but I think we need to be taught math and um, English and history, history, because we can learn from history and we can learn from our personal histories. Like for me, you know, I had two alcoholic grandmothers and nobody wanted to talk about it as if there was a solution to that. But I know there is a solution. I don't have to live like it anymore. And it will, it will be hard at times. And um, getting sober is hard. And having feelings are hard. But you can do it. If you believe in yourself. And I believe in you. And I believe in hu human beings. Um, I have a, a melancholy maybe way, or, or I don't even know what the right adjective is, but I, as I said, I'm really positive and I really believe that every human being out there is trying to do the best they can do. We're all trying to provide for our families and uh, be the best we can be. Be the best we can be. We get up in the morning and we try and we're like, we're going to do this today and I'm going to have a good life today and I'm going to provide for my family today. I'm going to try and stay happy. I'm going to try and work hard and I'm going to try and give them everything they need. And you're doing it. I just want to tell you that. 
if you're taking time to listen to a podcast, that's kind of about like getting sober and kind of about like being a mom and kind of about being a patriot and kind of about being loving this country and kind of about being a woman that's, uh, goes through life and it's not easy and, uh, and tells you that you're not alone. 